Ladies and gentlemen, please be solid for the committal of the dearly departed Harold Hodgson. really think much of her outfit, do you? No. They say that black can suit anyone, but that wasn't worth the money. Talking of which, parking was expensive. Oh, I parked in Sainsbury's. You get two free hours, and I'm not staying longer than that, so I want to get home for pointless. Did you know him well? No, but it's not much on the telly early afternoon. Third funeral I've had this week. Third? Yeah. A work colleague, who I didn't lie. And Roger's arm dropped dead after breakfast. Oh, nasty. Yeah, she had her boiled eggs and then just fell down. And they were organic. Well, at least you've got some wear out that car, too. Excuse me, any chance you can lend me a fiver for the collection plate? to sailing because of his naval days, but but the funeral director buried him as a sailor. It was a good job I hadn't given them Daddy's pipe, it'd look like Popeye. <coughs> mm. Well, yes. Joan, mm. do you want to hang on to this pawn ring? I mean, it's looking past its best, and mm. hang on a it on. smells a bit high. Oh, oh, Anita, I told Malcolm to leave that in the fridge. Oh, oh, I think... You better chuck it. I mean, we don't want any little upsets like last time, do we? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> no, it was an easy mistake to make, wasn't it, Mo? No, not the prawns. No, no, I wasn't criticising Malcolm. No, Joan, uh, Joan, I've just put it straight in your outside bin, Joan, but there's already a terrible smell coming from next door. And the flies. I think maybe mm. we should shut, shut the outside windows. Mm, yes, well, yes, it was quite a good turnout, yes. Yes, you remember I told you about my friend Sue Osler? Yes, the schizophrenic one. Yes, well, she came, so that boosted the numbers. <laughs> yes, Ma Malcolm's been here. Yes, he's been helping. Yes. Oh, it must have been such a shock when he had that tag removed. <clears throat> well, we all do it, don't we? I mean... I did it in Tesco's the other day. I used a 5p off voucher for a tin of tuna. It was a day out of date. Oh, I did feel like a criminal, though. <clears throat> mm. I think this is all that's left yes. of the quiche. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if it's on its use by, I think it's probably more tempting than anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. No, 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 I wasn't having a dig, Maureen. No, no, no. I no, I knew you would have done more if you could. Yes. Now, I know you had an optician's appointment. Joan. Yes. Joan. Joan, is this cake fresh cream? Only I'm a bit worried because it's quite warm in here. Oh, well, I'm not warm. Are you sure it's not your age, Ruth? No. Perhaps you're having no. one of your moments. No, Maureen. Uh, no, just hang, hang on a minute, Maureen. <clears throat> no worries there, Ruth. It, it's a Morrison's deal of the day cake, and they're never real cream. <laughs> no, no. Well, I had to be very careful with what we dabbed it. Yes. Yes, well, he'd have said it was a good thing you couldn't come, because he reckoned you could see round corners with that lazy eye. <laughs> mm. 
I know, well, I'm a crier at the best of times, but oh, it must be so much worse for you with all the tears coming out of just that one eye. Mm. Oh, do you know, that reminds me. I can get that damp in the bathroom sorted now, can't I? Yeah. Mm? Oh, yes, all right, dear. Yes, yes. I'll, I'll give you a call next week. Yes, all right, then. Bye, bye, love. Bye. 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 Oh, that was my sister, Maureen. She couldn't come to the funeral. Oh, that's a shame. You've not met my Maureen, have you? <clears throat> Is she like you, Joan, or is she glamorous? <laughs> oh, no, no, she's nothing like me. No, tall she is, long blonde hair. Only got the one working eye has to wear a patch. <laughs> oh, she's a looker. And she's got a beautiful voice as well. You should hear her. She does a wonderful Gabrielle. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean to say she couldn't make it just because of a lazy eye? Well, no, not just that. She had a bit of a falling out with father. You know, he, he did become a sneaky beggar in his old age. Oh, do you know what he did? He went to the GP and he had a new hearing aid put in. He changed his will when he heard what our Maureen had to say about him. She was livid. Oh dear. Families can be trouble, can't they? Such a worry. Mm -hmm. Indeed. <laughs> yes, I ended up nursing my father for years. <laughs> Never lost his sense of humour, though. I started to call him Spider-Man. <laughs> well, not because he had any special powers, but the poor love couldn't get out of the bath. <laughs> I'll just go and see if anybody else has arrived. Peter said he might pop in. I don't think I'd like to be buried. I would worry in case I wasn't dead. Well, I doubt you'll have much choice, will you, dear? Oh, no, I will. You know how I worry. I'm going to have my funeral all planned out. I've been saving for it as well. Oh, well, that's very kind of you. But I imagine it's not overly expensive when you haven't got that many mourners. You could probably fit them all into just the one car. <laughs> anyway, where are all these people Joan's supposed to be expecting? Perhaps I'll be cremated. Oh, that reminds me. Did you take the roast pork out of the oven? Yes. It's, it's under the foil in the kitchen. It should be okay. Oh, well, let's hope that's not on the turn as well. So it is warm in here. You do feel warm. Oh, Ruth, do stop worrying. It's becoming <laughs> very tiresome. And no wonder Edward never wants to be at home these days. Anyway, I thought you were seeing someone about these panic attacks. Mm. Edward's put me on his booper. I'm seeing a hypnotherapist. <laughs> well, it doesn't seem to be working. You might as well have gone in any chairs. Have you noticed any changes? I don't really know. It's playing havoc with my appetite. At Sue Osler's last week, I went nauseous at the nut roast. <clears throat> Sue Osler is a nut job. It often seems to happen when I'm around nuts. I think it's to do with the regression therapy and the squirrel incident when I was younger. Which squirrel incident? Oh, well, when Edward and I were courting, we had a beautiful picnic one summer under the big elm tree in the park. Oh, we had champagne and strawberries and all the lovely things you have on a picnic. <laughs> I remember Edward even bought a little bag of oysters because he said that champagne and oysters always put him in the mood. Oh, please, <laughs> spare me those kind of details. Just, just get to the point, will you? Well, anyway, it was a lovely hot day and we were feeling a bit woozy after the champagne, so we had a little lie down. Oh, I got the fright of my life when a squirrel scampered across the bridge of my nose to get to Edward's nuts. <laughs> and that's put you off nut roast? All nuts. Brazil, hazel, dry roasted. Oh, I go nauseous at the sight of a Snickers bar. Oh, well, let's hope no one gets nauseous over the sight of these sandwiches. Did you make these, Ruth? Yes. There is ham and tuna and cheese for the vegetarians. <laughs> Are they all on brown bread? Oh, yes. I only eat brown bread. I won't have white in the house. Oh. They say brown bread is supposed to keep you 
slim. <laughs> How's the diet going? Not on a diet. No? Yeah. Oh. oh, well, as long as you're happy, it doesn't really matter, does it? It really doesn't matter, does it, with winter coming up? I mean, you can wear lots of layers and baggy jumpers. Never really bothered you, though, has it? You're like my sister. She's always suffered with her weight. Oh, how is she? Has she still got that house in France? No, she sold that. She got a good price for it. A farmer in the village gave her 120,000 euros. <laughs> and two piglets. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. It looked lovely. I remember seeing photos of her in all the local restaurants. Did she buy a new place? Yes, a little flat over a boulangerie. How does she um, spend her summers now? Oh, just sweating and stinking mainly. I try not to visit her when it's too hot. Well, it's not comfortable, is it? She'd be in her element at this buffet. She'd eat anything. I remember her wedding. She had long hair back then, brunette she was. I remember following her up the aisle. She looked like me, though, from behind. She, she was the first bride I ever saw cut the cake with a fork. I remember my wedding to Edward. We didn't have a lot of money then. We got married on a budget. Mother made my wedding dress. <laughs> oh, yes. I remember it now. She couldn't sew, could she? No, but she was excellent at knitting. I don't think anyone noticed. It was unique at the time. Mm, it still is. It's a shame it rained so heavily on the day. Your makeup ran, and then the dress shrank. And then, when the bridesmaid caught her heel in the train, and it started to unravel. <laughs> oh. oh, Anita, don't. Oh, it was so embarrassing. Oh, to think, 120 people saw me in my underwear. Oh, I go cold at the thought of it. Well, maybe oh. I'm doing you a favour with your hot flushes. <gasps> Anyway, such unusual wedding photos. <laughs> it was lucky he caught them all, wasn't it? It's a shame he didn't have a camcorder at the time. You could have got £250 for one of those television programmes, couldn't you? Which actually would have paid for a nice <laughs> buffet. <coughs> oh, really, Ruth, don't you have a special word or something to help you at times like this? Sunshine. <laughs> something new with your hair? No, just giving us a little brush oh. through. Oh, you have to be careful with hair that thin. Brush too hard and it looked like you've got the mange. <laughs> Ruthie, I've got lots of exciting news. Now, I've done a little course. I'm a trained life coach. Three hours in Milton Keynes, but well, they gave me the certificate. So if you ever need me, you know where I am. Oh, we could have done with you a few minutes ago when Ruth was doing her impression of Darth Vader. <laughs> the force was certainly with her then. Oh dear, oh, Ruth, what happened? Oh, Ruth was reminded of a traumatic event in her life. Oh, not that cheeky squirrel. Oh. Yes. Although, I think in all fairness, Edward was more traumatised by it than I was. Mm. See you in fine form today, Anita. Oh, you know me, always up for the occasion. <laughs> Unlike your Donald. <laughs> Someone's got a fabulous bulk cough. Pick it up. Wait a sec. Hello? No, 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 I'm at a funeral. No, just put 
Put the knives away, yep, somewhere up high where we can't get to them. Sorry, I meant she. Yep. Just unplug the electric knife. No, I can't, I've just arrived. Joni's my friend. Yes, yeah, yeah, tell Celine she's my friend too. It'll be fine, Benedict. I'm a trained life coach. All right then, later, babe. Bye. Everything okay? Well, remember Sean? You know the one who used to work at the council? Sean? Oh, I know, the tall, hairy one, about six and a half foot. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. Well, he's going through the change. Oh, so is Ruth. No, he's, he's transitioning. Transitioning to what? Celine. Well, you should see him now, right? He can't cope with all the meds. I mean, it's too much oestrogen. We went to a 60s fancy dress party the other night. Oh, he went as Dusty Springfield. Won first prize in the competition. Oh, well, that must have boosted his confidence. Mm, they didn't realise he'd come as Dusty Springfield. They thought he was Myra Hindley. <laughs> Anyway, Joni, I am sorry I missed the funeral, but, but I've been very unwell myself. You know. Oh, really, Peter? What's happened? I've had an awful cold. Oh. The sniffles, if you will. Oh. Went out last Sunday with my friend Benedict. He promised he'd take me out the club. Been banged up ever since. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, it just came over me all of a sudden. Broke out in a hot sweat. Originally, I thought it was because Benedict had got his little growler out. His what? His little growler. It's um, what's his Yorkshire Terrier. He forgot I'm allergic, you see. You should have seen me. Puffing and panting, spread across his chaise lounge. Oh. Mm. One minute I'm boiling hot, next, freezing cold. My hands were all clammy. Oh, how awful. Well, it got worse. As Benedict lay me on his bed, I could feel one of my heads come on. Oh, and you do suffer with those. I'm a martyr to a throbbing head, Joni. <laughs> Foaming at the mouth, I was. Yeah. Well, I had to stay at Benedict's, so he laid me on his bed and, well, I went all floppy. Oh, what did you do? He popped a little thermometer in my mouth. He said I was raging hot. Tossing and turning all night, I was. Bed sheets were soaked through in the morning. Oh, dear. Still, I'm not one to make a fuss. I'm here now. How was the service? Many come? Oh, yes, there were quite a few. Yes, Sue Osler came. Oh, how is she? Still suffering with the schizophrenia. Mm. Well, last year's pantomime didn't help, did it? The casting was in very poor taste, Joan. I mean, you cast her as the seven dwarfs. <laughs> well, she's a very versatile actress, and, and she was the only one who could portray all seven emotions. Mm. Not at the same time, though. Anita, have I left my cardigan in your car? Oh, feeling cold now, are we, Ruth? I don't know. Do you mind if we go and have a look? You know how I worry. Oh, calm down, dear. Do you need that paper bag again? Anyway, I wouldn't worry about replacing that old card, eh? Most charity shops have the same sort of stock. I didn't buy it in the charity shop. I got it new last month. Really? Oh, well, they see, the vintage look is it. She don't change, does she? No. See little Belinda's here? <laughs> yeah, she won't miss it for the world. No. And she can have a jolly good nosh on the buffet. Hey, you see them tuna sandwiches? Yeah. I used a voucher. 5p off a tin of tuna. It was a day out of date, but they didn't say anything. Well, I'm just going to stick to the alcohol at the moment, because it'll, it'll help me throw. How was the service? Oh, it was... it was lovely, Peter. Yeah, well, I mean, I hope it brought you comfort during these difficult times. He's gone to a far better place. Yeah, he always hated this house. Mm. And uh, Sue Osler, she stayed for the whole service? Oh, yes, but she was ever so selfish. She wouldn't let anyone else sit in her pew. She kept saying it was full. Well, it can't be helped, can it? No, you know. Oh, excuse me. Oh. I'll chat to Belinda. How are you, Belinda? Mm. Planned your funeral yet? <laughs> you have to think of these things, don't you? Dusty Bing. I mean, I've planned my enemy. Mm. It's not going to be for a good while yet, but you've got to think of it, haven't you? Mm -hmm. 
Someone's got a fabulous phone call. Pick it up. It. Hello. What do you mean you've lost her? Oh no, she wouldn't have got far. No. No, they've been on strike for ages, even if she did throw herself on the line. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're electrified. No, they'll have switched the electric off, Benedict, and, and she'd be fine because she'd be wearing a rubber croc, so it's not to worry. Yeah. All right then, love. Yep. Yep, I'll pass by the level crossing on my way home. All right then, bye. Oh, it's been lovely chatting to you, Belinda. Now, I'm gonna go and have a little ciggy. Anything you want before I go? Mm. You can have what? Oh, I'll just get Joni to do it. Joni, mm -hmm. going for a fag. I'm all right then, but tell me back. I want to introduce you to my nephew, Malcolm. Oh, will do. There we are then, Malcolm. There, aren't we, Joni? No, no, I'm fine. Did you get your cigarettes from the shop? Yes, thank you. And thank you for that telly you lent me. Sorry about Grandad's flowers. There must have been some kind of mix-up at the florist. Oh, that's all right. He got some in the end, didn't he? Even if they did spell out mum. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Your mum phoned while you were out and she sends her love. I, I told her about that dodgy 5p offer for a tin of tuna and she wasn't impressed. <laughs> no. She wouldn't be. No, she's very straight-laced, is your mother. Must have been heck of a shot with her, for her, were you having that tag? <laughs> I told you, honey, Jan. I don't have it anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. No. Oh, no, of course not. It's me who should be sorry. Turning up here with no money. I just don't know what's out in my bank. There must be something wrong with my card. Bankers. You hear about it all the time. Bankers' bonuses. Hmm. I mean, look at Belinda. They stopped her money because she forgot her pin. Bankers. What? <laughs> they caused that credit crash and, and now this Brexit and... Well, it can't be helped. Anyway, don't mention it. Don't give it another thought, Grandad. Well, he'd have loved those flowers. He would have been proud, wouldn't he? Oh, yes. You were the apple of his eye. Well, he's... His only grandson. <coughs> did he, uh, did he see me on the old Jamie Cox, right? No, um, no. Grandad got very confused watching that. It was all them people with no teeth. He kept thinking he was looking in the mirror. <laughs> well, what was it like there, then? Nah, it's not like you see on the telly. And a lot of it would be staged, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. It's a farce. You know that green room they put you in? It's not even green. Well, you can't trust them television folk, can you? And I still don't trust that DNA test they've done either. No, neither do I. That baby could have been anybody's. It even said across the bottom of the screen the mother was soliciting. Oh, no, honey, Joan. It said she was a solicitor. <laughs> oh. Well, Grandad was more a fan of David Dickinson, you know. Reminded him of the old days serving in India. Someone always trying to strike a deal by the roadside. <laughs> Poor Grandad. <sighs> mm. I had to be ever so careful what he watched on the television. Oh, yes. It was the television that finished him off, you know. I just popped out to make his tea. I came back and there he was. Dead. Finished off by loose women. <laughs> and he never did like that Janet Street Porter. It was such a shock. Yeah, it must have been. I came in and, and there he was, slumped in his seat. Really? His hat was in his lap along with his hands. Dr. Tang always said he, he suffered with stiffness in his joints. Mrs. Mallard used to come and rub his creams in for him. Oh, it would cheer him up ever so much. He'd have a spring in his step for the rest of the day. <laughs> he and Mrs. Mallard were of a similar age. Mrs. Mallard? Her uh, next door. <coughs> he used to call her his 
is Little Duck. You know, on account of her being called Mallard. <laughs> I haven't seen her for ooh, nearly two weeks now. She uh, didn't come to the funeral. Uh, probably didn't want to shell out for any flowers. Uh, I did knock to tell her your grandfather had died. I, I even put a note through her letterbox and I left a message on her answer phone, but. Well, she can be a funny old thing at times. <laughs> Isn't that the house to the right? I thought it was empty. Oh, dreadful smell coming from there, isn't there? She must have left her bins piling up in the garden. I mean, I know they say you should look after your elderly neighbours, but, you know, if she can't come to the funeral of an old friend, then, well, well, I can't be bothered with her right now. I mean, just look at poor Blinda over there. Poor dear. Mm, she's had an awful time of it of late. She can hardly remember a thing nowadays. <laughs> See that letter in her hand? That's her new pin number, you know, that I was telling you about. She's probably trying to memorise it, but she has terrible trouble remembering anything. She has had for ages. So I said, bring the letter round here and I'll look after it for you. Joan, the door looks very um, <clears throat> appetising, but I'm going to have to pop out and see Donald. He's been trying to get hold of me, only I've got to turn the ringer back on after the service. Oh dear, is he still not well? No, I couldn't even get him up this morning. Oh, that is a worry. Oh, oh have you met my nephew Malcolm? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we met at the church. Oh. I was one of the people who lent him some money for the collection plate. Oh, Hello again. <laughs> Hello. So, uh, your husband's not well. He's got a delicate complaint. See you. He can't get. Yes, thank you, Joan. <laughs> He's got a man's ailment. He's due to his age, as I've never had a man suffer with such a thing before. <clears throat> well, if you'll excuse me, ladies. I've got to get in touch with those florists. What a bloody mess they made of them flowers. Yes. I heard the people from the ceremony before us complaining that somebody had pinched their mother's floral tribute. Oh, I mean, really, you can't trust anyone these days, can you? I mean, funeral flowers. Whatever next. <laughs> oh, Anita, is Donald not coping? Indeed, it's getting harder and harder to rouse him. I really am trying my best, but he seems to have lost all interest in life. Is he depressed? He's becoming that way. No oomph in him. I've told him to get a grip of himself. Well, perhaps he needs a little...